mayfly, a very common insect um, found all over North America. Um, actually, you can find them around the world. We recognize them by their delicate features, their upright, transparent wings, uh, their extended body that kind of curves upward slightly with the classic long tails in the back. There, there are over 600 species of mayfly in North America alone. And, and many people think the insects have a very short uh, lifespan, maybe a day or two. But that isn't the reality. And that's kind of where fly tying and fly fishing enters the picture. Mayflies will go through four different life stages. They'll begin life as an egg deposited in the water by an adult. The mayfly will come out of the egg and em enter what we call the, the nymph stage. And different species of mayfly will look and actually behave a little bit differently. The nymphs are aquatic. You might find them swimming freely in the water or even on the bottom of a rock that you've pulled out of the water. However, most commonly the mayfly will live in this nymph stage for about a year. At that point, the mayfly will go to the surface of the water and begin emergence. Uh, this is when the emerger fly patterns are gonna be most productive. Once on the water surface, the nymph's shell is shed and it becomes what we call a dun, uh, the next life stage. In the dun form, the mayfly now starts to appear more like the insect that we associate with mayflies. The wings are now visible and the classic long tails are, are there as well. The dun, now that it has wings, will lift away from the water. Uh, and it'll find a place to land and begin its last change, which um, will be a shedding of its shell again for a final time, becoming what we call a spinner. The spinner is going to mate, its eggs will be fertilized, and it will deposit the eggs in the water in several different ways, actually, uh, depending on the species of the mayfly. At that point, the spinner is spent and dies most often on the surface of the water. But keeping in mind these last two phases, the dun and the spinner, can last uh, anywhere from a few hours to a couple of days. And that's, that's probably why many people think that they're only alive for that long. Because the nymph stage remains in the water uh, on average for about a year, the mayfly is a pattern that you should have in your box and several varieties um, in your box. Here in this video, you can actually watch a few of these nymphs crawling and swimming around, and you get a good look at what mayfly nymphs look like, how they behave. You can see their gills moving, and the nymphs are crawling around on the bottom. This drawing shows the various parts of the nymph's body. Uh, you can see the head, the thorax, uh, which is also where the legs are located. Behind the thorax is the abdomen, the largest section of the body. And then finally, you'll have the tails protruding out of the back end of the abdomen. All of this knowledge is going to be important to fly tires and fly fishermen. The body of your fly should reflect accurately and proportionally the segments of the body. Tail length and bulk will be important. These are all things that you want to keep in mind when you're tying and selecting the fly that you're going to use. With over 600 species of mayflies in uh, North America, you'll want to see what's in the water you're fishing. What are the size of the bugs? Uh, what, what is the color and patterns on the, the natural bug? Here's a mayfly nymph uh, from my local waters. It clearly fits the general mayfly nymph dimensions. You can see the head, you can see the thorax, you can see the abdomen, and then finally you can see the tails. On this specific nymph, the abdomen is just over half the length of the entire body, excluding the tails. The tails are longer than the abdomen, but interestingly they're shorter than the length of the entire body. We'll finish here finally with a, a really quick comparison of a mayfly nymph to the pheasant tail pattern itself which is what we'll be tying today. The match is not perfect, but you can see how closely the pheasant tail mimics the real mayfly nymph. Today we're gonna to be tying a, uh, the pheasant tail nymph, which is 
uh, one of the most basic patterns. Uh, most everybody's going to have it in their fly box. Um, in my vise right now, I've got a, a size 12 uh, nymph hook. The materials that I'll be using today will be um, for thread. I'm using this sheer black uh, 4 aught or 14 aught uh, thread. Uh, the wire that I'm going to be using for my ribbing is um, ultra wire in a brassy size uh, for this particular size of fly. Uh, then we'll also be using some peacock curl. Uh, this is a Spirit River UV2. Um, it's just the natural, uh, the natural color for um, pheasant or for peacock curls. And last of all is my. Uh, peacock or my pheasant anyway I think I could talk straight this is uh, made by nature spirit um, love this uh, product um, they are just great with uh, all their feathers and furs um, and I think they might be located in Idaho as well which is really cool cause that's where that's where I originally came from Okay, so let, let's go ahead and get busy. Um, let's get our, our thread attached to the hook here. Um, you'll see that I'm not really gonna, I'm not going to start right behind the eye of the hook. Uh, and I'll explain in a moment why I just don't do that. <laughs> so I've got, I'm holding my tag in here. I'm just slowly working this thread back towards the bend of the hook. Um, getting about there and we'll go ahead and uh, clip this tag end off of thread and I can throw that away. One of the reasons that I uh, try to leave this space up front without thread on it is it really helps me get uh, keep a good measurement um, and stay consistent in terms of how long I want the abdomen of this fly to be um, but also uh, I don't want a lot of bulk up there because uh, that's where I'm going to finish off the fly with a bunch of different materials and the less I have one there right now the better off um, I'm going to be. Uh, but let's just go ahead and continue down here towards the end of the hook the, or at least the bend sorry not the end. Then I'm going to bring that forward a little bit so that we can get ready to tie on our first material. Uh, we'll use this actually three different times as we go through here and here's a, a pheasant just a natural pheasant tail uh, what I'm going to do here is I want to grab oh gosh maybe maybe four or five fibers if I can manage and this is uh, how they look and what you notice is if you pull the, if you have your pheasant tail pulled up at a 90 degree angle, almost um, perpendicular with the um, shaft of that hook, then you're gonna find that your tips are gonna pretty much line up. Once I have those tips pretty well lined up like that, I'll, I'll pinch the tips themselves. And then I'll just rip that off of my feather like I did just there. Uh, that will leave a little bit of uh, what we call the curly uh, ends. I just clip them off for convenience sake or um, so they don't distract me. Uh, probably, certainly not necessary. So here's, here are my tails um, of pheasant tail. Uh, I'm going to want them to be about the length of the body. Um, maybe a little shorter even. And so with that, um, I'm going to pinch right here because that's right about where the length of the body would be and I'm going to kind of hold that on a, a tiny small angle and we're going to just go ahead and loop our thread around um, once or twice here uh, then we'll take a look at what do we have here um, right here um, I actually might make these a little bit shorter um, I'm just going to pull on this end that I cut to make these just a tiny bit shorter. There we go. Then I'm going to just make sure everything is staying up here on the top of the, the fly. I've got my tail lengths where I want them, so now I'm just going to go back to where I'm going to um, have the back of the abdomen of the fly. Then I'm going to work my way back up to the front. And you'll note that I'm, I'm not clipping off these, uh, these ends um, quite yet. 
uh, they, they'll actually help us get a little bit of extra bulk in the fly. Uh, the fly is uh, uh, a mayfly uh, pattern, a mayfly nymph, and its body is very, not only segmented, but it's also um, a bit tapered. And so we want to build up a little bit of material as, as we're going along to help us build this thinking ahead, building this uh, taper. Uh, into the the body of the fly. Uh, the next material we're going to tie in is is going to be my uh, copper wire, uh, which I tend to lose every time I uh, set set it down with good intentions. Uh, let's see, there we are. We got it now. There we go. So when I tie in my copper, I'm going to tie it on the, for me, on the far side of the hook. So it's going to be closest to the um, lens. And uh, I'm just going to give, hold on to it there a little bit and uh, give it, you know, two or three, four or five turns or so just to secure it. I, I do like it to be on that far side of the hook. And you'll notice I've got extra copper here. You can cut that off with the scissors, but what I prefer to do is just if, if I pull backwards or on this and do it slowly enough that I don't pull it completely off the hook, um, then I can I have it in place. I don't have to make a cut um, of, of the copper with my scissors. So now we're just going to take the thread again back down to the base, uh, which is the bend of the hook. And that's where we're, we'll be starting our body or, or abdomen of, of this uh, mayfly um, uh, pattern, which is called the pheasant tail. Okay, so now we're going to jump back to our pheasant tail again. Uh, and this time the, the bunch that we're grabbing, we're going to grab these uh, to uh, make the body, uh, the, the abdomen of, of the fly. Uh, in this particular case, I, I don't really need the tips uh, lined up. Um, they're, they are kind of, but that's just a coincidence. So I'm going to rip those, those off. Um, I'm going to get rid of the curly things on the end that... Um, just end up bothering me from time to time. So we're gonna just take that and clip those right off. I'm gonna tie this in uh, with the tails heading towards the eye of the hook or the tip ends. You can see them right there. And I'm just gonna take a, a wrap or two here, similar to what I did before. So we'll take a few wraps. <laughs> And then, just like uh, we did with the copper wire, I'm actually going to take hold of these and draw them back, pull them back. I haven't tied it really tight down with the knot or anything yet. Um, so there, again, I'm, I'm leaving those in place so that I can build some of that bulk ahead of time. And uh, from there, we're just going to go back here to where our tail section started because that's where we are going to uh, begin building our abdomen here in a second. So right now we're just gonna tidy some things up a little bit with some thread wraps uh, moving forward. Just kind of covering up what we've done so far. Doesn't have to be perfect or pretty because it's mostly gonna be covered up anyway. But we, what we do want to do is make sure that we build the taper into this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the thread um, about halfway down uh, the abdomen here and then we're going to bring it back um, up towards the eye of the hook again and then I'll actually do that one more time um, but only go about a quarter of the length down this time before I come back uh, to the the front again and now you can see in profile that we've got a we've got ourselves a pretty decent um we've got ourselves a pretty decent uh, taper going on there i'm i'm gonna right now but what a uh, half hitch into this i i do a half hitch just with my finger i just stick it on the thread and wrap it around like that i stick my fingertip on the eye of the hook and i let this just slide right off um, I, I'm doing that because I am going to use this uh, bobbin holder 
Um, I like to use that the bobbin holder while, or the bobbin crib cradle, I think they like to call them more commonly, but I call it the bobbin holder. But, um, that allows me to kind of hang that more thread. It, it's now out of the way. We can focus on this. I tied the half hitch in. Uh, so as we rotate the device, um, the thread's not going to come unwrapped because it's got a knot in it. So now we're going to turn to our, our hackle pliers here, um, and we're going to attach them to the butt end section um, of those pheasant tail fibers. Uh, and from there, I'm going to kind of just hold that group of fibers straight up in the air and I'm going to start my rotation. I'll get that first rotation right around the base. Uh, and you'll notice I'm exaggerating going out and around the point of the hook a little bit. That's very much on purpose. Uh, that's a very sharp uh, point and it will, I guarantee you, it's happened to me too many times, catch one of the fibers from your pheasant tail and uh, just rip it uh, right off. So we want to maintain some, some of our tension here. I'm going to back that off a little bit here. Because I don't like where it was going. Uh, that's a nice th thing that I also learned with fly tying is you can actually go backwards for a second and then move it back forward again and, and do it the right way, or at least the way that you wanted it done. Uh, so now I've got my pheasant tail, uh, abdomen. Uh, I can move back now to my thread. And my thread, I'm going to um, actually want to notice I'm keeping the tension a little bit on that pheasant tail. If I let go of it right now, it would just unwrap. Done that before too. So I'm going to just take a couple of wraps behind uh, this uh, abdomen that we're building out of pheasant tail. And I'm going to actually take a few wraps in front of it as well. Um, and at this point, we should have it pretty solid and sturdy in place. I can let go with my hackle pliers. It's got a nice little shape there that we'll be using while we tire fly. Um, actually, that's not true at all. Um, we're going to clip those off and we'll clip them off as close as we can. Just like so. Um, and then we're going to kind of move to our next material, which is going to be the copper wire. That's going to give us not only um, the ribbing for the fly, but it's also going to give us um, some added durability to this fly. So let's, let's once again, I'm going to just, you know, hang my thread on my, on my um, cradle here. That looks like it needs tightened because it wants to keep falling over on me. So we kind of have that in place. Actually, we don't have it in place at all. Um, see if I can tighten that down. There we are. So now I'm going to grab my um, copper wire here. Try not to ruin the tails. And in this case, what, what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called counter wrapping. Um, when we wrap the pheasant tail, we are bringing it over the front of the hook this way in a downward pattern around the hook. Uh, with this copper wire here that I have, I'm going to take it under, around, and over the top. So it's basically being, um, it's going to be wound the, the opposite direction of the pheasant um, tail abdomen pieces. And so we're just going to bring that copper wire forward and try our best to, uh, you know, make, get some even turns uh, so that that can uh, mimic the the ribbing of, on the abdomen of the fly. And we're just going to keep going until we get right up to where we pretty much tied off our... <laughs> pheasant tail abdomen. Uh, I'll go ahead and take my thread around there, you know, a time or two, just to make sure I got it nice and tightened down. Uh, get my bobbin cradle out of the way. I'm going to take a few more thread wraps here now that I've got some stuff um, out of the way. 
don't need to make a ton of them. Um, and from here, we're just going to use the friction helicopter method of uh, taking this off. You could use scissors if you want. You won't get as close of a cut, and you'll also dull the, dull the crap out of your scissors. But if you uh, just pull on it um, pretty firm, pulling up while you rotate it around or swing it back and forth, you'll find that it just kind of breaks itself off. Um, and it's a little something here, and I don't know what it is or where it came from, but I don't like it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that with my trusty scissors. All right, so now we have our abdomen. Um, you can uh, hopefully see that um, my copper wire is, is, is going kind of in this direction. The pheasant tail abdomen section is kind of going more in this, this direction. So by, by wrapping it that way, um, this fly becomes a lot more durable because um, that copper wire is holding that pheasant tail firmly, very firmly in place at this point. We're going to uh, turn back to our pheasant tail uh, one, one more time. Uh, presuming I can find it. It's probably on the ground. So here we are with our, our pheasant tail again. Uh, once again, we're going to want sort of like the tail, um, except for I'm going to want a few more fibers here. Um, this is going to be my wing case of, and my legs uh, for this nymph. And so I want those to be uh, pretty even. Once I have them even, just like before, I'm going to hold the tips tight and I'm just going to pull and there you have it. Um, as I throw my pheasant tail somewhere, let's go ahead and cut off those little curly ends here. Nice and square. We're going to turn these legs around because when we tie them in, they're actually going to protrude out of the front uh, of the eye of the hook. And I'm going to want it to extend beyond the eye of the hook about um, three quarters uh, of the body length is all. Um, so I have to keep in mind that these are going to go backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put those in right here. I put myself in a couple of wraps to hold that in place and we're actually going to take not really hard i want to keep kind of loose wraps here because i don't real i don't want you can see already um, when you start doing that that the thread has the habit of wanting to pull those over uh, the back uh, towards the lens and the harder you pull the more likely they're going to do that um, but once I've got them in place, I can be pretty firm with the thread as long as I um, just make sure not to break the thread, which is, you can recover from that. Um, that's the, one of the other things that I've learned. Uh, so after that, we're going to go ahead and go tie in our uh, peacock hurl. Uh, we're ready for that. When I'm using the peacock, um, you can see the eye of the peacock here is kind of blue. Um, I use uh, some of the feathers, or yeah, some of the the um, the hurls that are a little bit closer towards the eye of the hook, or the eye of the hook, the eye of the um, piece of uh, our little piece of uh, peacock hurl. Uh, you can see I've got those um, right there. Um, I'm going to tie these in by the tips, but not by the very tips, because the very tips are incredibly um, delicate um, and break really easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit of this off here. And that's where I'm going to tie in. So I'm going to just lay these um, on my hook um, behind the eye. And I'm going to put my first wrap in place just to kind of hold it in place. Uh, then I'm going to work my way forward um, just to make sure that's nice and secure. And then we'll be bringing this right back to where we want the thorax to start. Um, and that's the next uh, part of the body of the, the mayfly nymph that we're going to uh, be working with. So trying to get these peacock curls out of the way a little bit. And when you're doing this, um, especially back where you're going to start your um, peacock hurl um, thorax, you want to make sure you don't crank down on the thread as hard as you can. Um, 
again, the thread will break. Um, if it doesn't, um, you you're, you could cut into the peacock curls themselves. They're very delicate and easy to break, and, and you'll find yourself breaking your curls off and getting very frustrated by that. I'm going to leave my thread hanging right about there. Um, I don't want to crowd the eye of the hook. I've got my peacock here. I'm going to gently kind of spin it a couple of times in my fingers, uh, basically creating a rope um, because these will try to uh, jump around a little bit. And we are just going to uh, make a couple wraps to make sure you get those right against the back. And then we're just going to do touching wraps. Until we get too close to the eye of the hook, you can see that now what, what, what's happened is we've, we've built ourselves a, a really nice, um, uh, thick and um, bushy kind of thorax here, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So I'm going to take a couple of thread turns behind that peacock curl to lock it into place. I'll take a few in front as well. Um, just to clean things up a little bit. And from there, I'm, I should be good to go ahead and uh, cut the, the balance of that peacock curl off um, or out of the fly. Just like that. Throw away the waste. Um, so now we're really getting there. Um, so here are my legs. Remember, they're, they're protruding out about from the eye of the hook. And what I do here usually is I take my thumb and I just poke kind of push those backwards, um, bend them backwards. You'll see how they kind of splay out when you do that. Um, that's what I want them to do. Um, I look like I'm doing pretty good here in terms of the numbers that I have on either side. Obviously, I'm going to have legs on both sides. Um, so that's ready to go. I'm going to grab my uh, the, those uh, pheasant tail fibers that I'd clipped off earlier and bring those right up across and through um, here. I want them to spread themselves out a little bit. And then basically I'm going to um, make sure I get a couple more of those in there. So now what I want to do is pretty much sweep these legs back a little bit um, while I have the this pheasant tail piece. Um, sticking out in the front. Okay, um, then I pinch um, fairly tight um, to, I'm pinching the hook, but also the material is in between my fingers. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and take a, a wrap or two here uh, in order to, you know, kind of get everything in place where I want it. Um, and from there, um, actually, I do want to take a wrap or two in front of the eye as well, uh, just to make sure that that's really secure. We're going to go back to our scissors um, one more time here, and we're going to cut those uh, the balance of the pheasant tail off right there. Uh, from from there, we're just gonna we're gonna clean that head up a little bit by you know kind of tying over the top of those butt ends a little bit. Uh, you can see I'm starting to build a nice little black head there. Doesn't need to be very big. Um, and since I know I'm gonna whip finish here in just a second, I, I and that's gonna add more wraps. Um, we're just gonna leave it right there. We're going to grab my whip finisher and then we'll um, hopefully do a, a video on how to use whip finishers um, somewhere along the way here, but uh, not today. Today I'm just going to use it. So there's a one, two, three, four. That's good enough for me. Let that thread off of there. Pull that thread off of there. Pull my thread down a little bit so that it. I, I know that it's on there snugly, and from from there now I can get my scissors, and we're going to end right where we started. We started by securing the thread to the hook. We're going to end by um, cutting the thread off of the hook, uh, and I'll, I'll probably do a little bit of um, house cleaning here. Um, 
that's what I usually do uh, when I'm doing my flies. So uh, I get those wings down a little bit more than they were currently sitting. And I'm actually feeling pretty good about the way that those are kind of situated at this point. Um, so there you have it. Um, as I turn this uh, this way, you can kind of see how those legs have, or the tips of the pheasant here have now made uh, some legs. Uh, we've got a nice um, wing case going over the top, our thorax, our tail, everything is in kind of good and working order. That's the point where I will put some cement on here um, just to make sure that this doesn't become unwound, um, make it a little bit more durable. And so I'm just going to take a little bit of glue on, on really just a sewing pin. Um, just going to dab it right there on the top and get a little bit on the sides where I can. Then I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to wipe that off with my fingers and put just a tiny little bit more on here. And we're going to just sit this, let this go right onto those thread wraps underneath um, the fly. Then I'm going to put the lid back on. Uh, that's another thing that I've learned over the years is when I'm lazy and I don't put the lid back on, I I end up knocking that bottle over and that's looking pretty good. So there you there you have it. There's our wings, um, our thorax, our fluffy th th and there you go. Um, and that is that is the pheasant tail nymph.